All right, man. Bombshell shit just dropped. I literally, not even gonna, I'm not even gonna hold you. Literally, literally just finished the goddamn Rory and Ma, the truth. This is interesting because a lot of shit I said has come to fruition. And a lot of shit that I let Joe kind of, you know, narrative spin was a lie. Because I ain't gonna lie to you. I've always said that I feel like Rory and Ma need to really speak on it because. I've said in every video I've done about this, Joe's good at like doing, you know, the he's good at saying something without saying shit to still leave you like uh, not really knowing what's going on. I said that. That's what it seems like happened because, you know, when you listen to them dudes talk and you give it names, dates, location, addresses, this and that, it's kind of hard to spin that into like, you know, when the. When the ocean curls and your friends ride the wave with you and then someone, all that bullshit that, you know, Joe does, they didn't do that. So I'm kind of leaning to believe those guys. Now, of course, Joe's going to have to respond on the podcast coming up next week. He has to. He has to because everything changes now. Unless you're just like a Joe button, like dick sucking, whatever, you just want to ride that. That's fine. I I understand there's going to be people like that. I understand there's going to be people like that. But if you actually listen to what they say. And you listen to what Joe said, because I've been following the shit. It's big podcast, biggest hip-hop podcast in the world. The, the crumblings. The, the, it's like if the Breakfast Club would have crumbled when they was on their on they rise on the horizon, you would have had to watch that happen and see what's going on. So let's just get into what they talked about. So let's get to the main thing, the money thing, right? Everybody says it's not about money, but it's about money, right? Accounting. Joe made it seem like... They was employees who got a salary trying to look at the books at a major company. Because I know a lot of you people are going to be like, if you work at McDonald's, do you get to see the accounting? Yeah, if I worked at McDonald's and I get paid off percentage, yes, I do. That's just what it is. So if the thing is there, because when they was talking about they get a mic money, I was, maybe that was my fault. I'm leading it to seem like they're getting salaried money. The contract is already having a guaranteed set of money. I'm thinking it's five hundred thousand dollars, right? Like it's five hundred thousand. That's what you're getting. Boom, boom, boom. You're good. Whatever's in the books doesn't really matter because as long as you get your five hundred thousand, it doesn't matter what's going on behind here. I'm running all this behind here. But when they say I'm working, I'm getting paid off profit percentage. You got to see the books. So just look at it in that lens. Look at it in that. Think about it if it was you. Like, don't look at your love for Joe. Don't look at your love for Akin. Don't look at none of that. Don't look at your love for these people that you you love their opinion. You love them because they validate your opinions or whatever you think. Don't do that. Think about it if it was you. If you was doing something. Yeah, I know. Oh, friends, business. Um, we're not talking about none of that because this is a part of business. And also, you wouldn't think your friend would snake you and jank you in this way. From what they're saying, like I said, I, they, they seem like they're telling the truth. If me and my friend, I could use me and my friend, me and Bryce have a podcast, absolutely unsure. That podcast does numbers, and me and him agree that, hey, you know, I paid for things in the beginning. I got the mics, I got all this. So if we make $100,000 this year, after all expenses, let's say, after expense, no, fuck that. We $200,000 after expenses, we get 100 because I ain't a mathematician. We break that up, I get 70, you get 30. I pay him 30,000, I get my 70,000. But then he's like, hey, you know, in the contract, says I get to look at the books. And I send them some bullshit that's not like a legit accounting thing. I can just fudge any numbers I want and pay you whatever. Even if he's getting paid, great. Even say they are getting 300000 400000 It's still not right if the podcast is making X, Y, and Z amount of money and I'm getting less money. Forget, because everybody, like we said, they were talking about value. What do they bring to the show? Was it Joe? Was it this? Was it that? That's just what's correct. If it's in the contract, that's just what's right. So when it comes to that, my whole perspective and narrative shifts on Joe. Now, I don't know how this will affect Joe. I still think there's going to be fans who don't give a fuck. They don't fuck with Roy. They don't fuck with Ma. They don't care about the business behind it. It was just a big whatever. They're going to keep moving, keep pushing. That's fine. But now, if this is true, which it looks like it's true, like I said, when people start giving dates, numbers, names, times, to me, it seems like a legit avenue and a legit conversation. Not the whole, ooh, when the waves in the ocean and the bullshit, all that, that don't seem legit to me. So, like I said, it makes me... Even when he speaks, when he speaks again, I'm going to kind of look at his skewed. If he's not coming off the top with talking like name, date, times, numbers, and this, I'm going to look at it like, oh, he, he's forming some kind of narrative because that's how you got to be great in media. Honestly, if you're in media, you have to be able to skew people in a way that you want. You have to be able to guide people's opinion in a way that you want. You have to be able to make people look at something a certain way that you say it, right? If you want to be great in media, 
The greatest media personalities of all time are able to control people by skewing them in a certain way in a certain location. I'll bring up Rush Limbaugh. He was able to speak to his people about politics in America to skew them in a certain way, even if every time it wasn't correct. But he was able to do that. Joe is able to paint stories, paint narratives, paint pictures, and move people in a certain way. Y'all know that. If you really love Joe Budden and you really listen, you know he can like, you know, he could paint a picture and make you look really pretty, even though it's not the correct direction you're supposed to go. So that's how I look at with the raw, the Rory and Maul thing. They say every time they bring it, it's two dollars to pay. I paid the two dollars because I was like, I don't got time to fuck around. Two dollars, I ain't got time to find the leak, the rip. Two dollars ain't shit. Let's go. So whenever they were speaking about them asking Joe about the accounting, like, can we get a real accounting thing? To, so we can really see like percentages or whatever. Cause like this Excel sheet shit isn't like a thing. Anybody could throw any numbers on Excel. And they even brought up that there was like a 400,000 mistake in one of the accounting things that had to be corrected. I don't know if that equated to them maybe needing to get more money or not, but whatever they said, they've been letting the shit rise since 2019. Could you imagine letting shit ride when you're on a percentage base pay? Even if you're making lovely money, I don't give a damn. If I go do a podcast with LeBron James and he agreed, like, cause LeBron, cause you like to use the thing like this person's more famous than you. They're bringing you onto the ride. But if me and LeBron James agreed to a 3% split, like if I get 3%, he get 97%. That's cool. He's LeBron fucking James. I'll take it, which is what they spoke about. They're like, of course, we're going to get the smaller percentage. Joe Budden is who he is. But if I'm getting a 3% percentage, I don't give a damn if you're LeBron. We agreed to that. I want to see. If we're making a million dollars, I want $300,000. I don't want 100000 You send me some shit on the spreadsheet, and I don't know if that's really what I'm supposed to make. So you just got to look at I mean, you got to look at it like that. I don't care who you like. I don't care who you dislike. You think the pod's great without him? That's fine. But we're just talking about... It's, and then now we can get to the friendship because I know everybody's like, this is business, not friendship. Now, it is Rory and Ma's fault to not really push the nose on it and not to push to get the shit correct because they're just like, we're friends. Obviously, Joe wasn't looking at it like, these are my friends. If, if, if the accounting was fucked up, right? We don't know. Like Maybe he wasn't showing them accounting. Maybe even giving was like the spreadsheets, but the accounting was still correct. That could be true. Like, they could be sending you a bullshit accounting Excel sheet, but the accounting could be correct. But if you want, if your friends are asking for like more security, like we want to see the, come on, bro. We want to see the real shit. You grant them that. And when you act like all oh, fussy and they say, you call me cussing me out and you're doing this and that, it'll make you think like, okay, there must be something going on. Logically as a human, you have to think that something is going on. If I'm asking for something simple, which is in our contract, which we are priced, um, we are percentage based on profits. Something's got to be going on with the books behind the scene. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. Not in my opinion. It does not look good. Like I said, I've already not really been listening to the show that much off. Not even because of Roy Miles. Before they, I even felt any tension, turmoil, whatever. You know, I go to whatever. Pers- uh, I look at the timestamps. Oh, they're talking about this. I want to key in on that, and then I go about my business. I'm not. So th- I'm not like, oh, I fucked Joe, but I'm never listening again. I wasn't even really listening to it to begin with. Not to begin with, I loved it in the beginning, but like towards the end. And then, um, then you get the part that it doesn't get talked about with Savon, Alex, Parks, and whatever. This is what they're saying. Because I listen to Savon and Alex, and it's like, okay, they have a different perspective, right? They have like a, they're obviously not even in the percentage based realm. They're like, you know, they're the actual like workers. If you want to say quote unquote real life workers, like, they're the workers. If you want to say Charlemagne, Envy, and Angela are the Breakfast Club, and then like the camera crew got, they're the worker workers. You know what I'm saying? They have a different perspective. They hear certain conversations. They see certain things. And if you watch their thing, they're obviously going to acquiesce to Joe because Joe's the one still providing them with a job. Savon was doing a lot of like, I want to sound like Joe. Like he was bringing up his situation with, I guess, one of his co has left. And I was like, oh, okay, nigga. All right. We get it. We get it. Nigga. We get it. But Rory said when the Patreon shit came up, they had no idea about the Patreon deal, which, which a lot of people said them niggas didn't know nothing about the Patreon deal. So he, he was saying that he's asking questions. Okay, what is this? We're doing Patreon now. He says Ian sent him a file or sent him a thing like this. How much you're going to get monthly for Patreon. It's all gravy. It's great. He's like, okay, is this a Joe Button network thing? See, the thing is, this girl, I guess, is this a whole network thing or is this a Joe Button podcast thing? That's all he was asking. Ian, he says Ian sent him the amount of money he's going to get. And then Joe called him barking on him. I'm like, why are you worried about the Patreon? Da, da, da. You're ungrateful. You're this. Because he said that he told Ian, hey, the first paycheck from Patreon. 
and Ma cooperated, like you said, you know, they're obviously against Joe, so of course they're going to cooperate, but it, it seemed legit, it seemed genuine. If you listen to Ma speak, he seemed like he was really done, upset, like he's not up for the floating around shit. That's what it looks like. He told them to give the money to the worker workers, you know, timestamp, save on, or whatever he does around there, Alex, Scream Man, Camera Guy, Erickson, give part, like give them the money. Looking out for them because I'm good right now on money. You would think that's a stand up thing to do. So, I don't know, man. It, you get new information. I said at first, I was like, okay, they're getting salary. So, I mean, maybe they shouldn't be looking at the books. But now you're saying your price percentage. So, you should be like, you guys out there, because a lot of people like to get on here and tell me, like, oh, you were wrong. You could, no, no, no. You should be able to change and shift in your opinion when you get more information and more knowledge. And that's what's happening here. This whole ride we're going on is a fucking ebbs and flow. Oh, this happened. Oh, no, nope, that's wrong information. Oh, this is correct information. That's what you got to do when you're talking about these things. So, will it affect Joe? I don't know. Will some of his fans be like, damn, he snaked the fuck out his friends? Because they didn't actually say they stole money from them. I think even they said they were overpaid. But the problem is the ethics of just giving me the proper information when I'm asking for it. If you listen to Joe speak about Complex, you listen to Joe speak about Spotify, and you hear him talking about withholding information from creators, not giving you the proper information to do your job correctly, or not knowing, oh, how many people, like when he said in one of the episodes, can I know how many people use my link? Like, you know, Spotify slash Joe Budden to sign up for Spotify. Hey, can I get that information? They told him no. What's the difference from, and he didn't like that. What's the difference from a percentage-based partnership wanting to see the accounting so I know how much I should be properly paid? What's the difference? There is no difference. So now, you know, you look kind of tiring to you look, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't look like good business. Ma did address the homeless shit because I was like, damn, this nigga was home. Damn, he said he was hiding detergent. He was a bum. He said he wasn't a bum. He said he might have had more money than Joe at that point. He brought up being on. And I said, I said this already. I said, like, people's narrative was like they didn't start. They weren't there from episode zero. I said, okay, that's cool. That's cute. That's fine. They said they don't want no IP. But we're not going to sit here and act like the shit didn't elevate once Ma got on there. Yes, Joe had the big moments. He had the everyday struggle, which, of course, brought more eyes to the thing. And they acknowledged that themselves. They never said they were the reason the show was big. But you cannot deny that the value was the chemistry of those three guys. Now you're saying, okay, yeah, throw anybody in there. It's going to be whatever. We'll see. We got to see the longevity. You can't look at two, three, four, five episodes. You got to see because podcasts are ever-changing. The audience is ever moving. You got to see what happens. So, because you got to understand, like, yeah, you listen to the Joe Budden rants. Like, I don't know, people like I get short term memory. Like, yeah, the Joe Budden rants are cool. They they get the viral shit, but the viral shit don't make you sit there for three hours and watch. The shit that makes you sit there for three hours and watch is the chemistry between these people. The chemistry between these guys is what gets you to sit there for three hours on a Wednesday, three hours on a Saturday, and listen to this. Maybe that's why I stopped listening to the. Maybe I felt. Maybe I felt like unconsciously felt that it was like eh, these guys aren't really vibing. I'm, I could just be saying that in hindsight because it's easy to say that now. But they're not vibing in a certain way they're supposed to be vibing. So when you hear Maul say, damn, he's trying to defame me. He's trying to say I was a bum. He's trying to do this. You look at Joe once again like, damn, that's some whole ass shit because. If you was to do that to your friend, you got to think you got to put yourself in your shoes when you're thinking about this thing. If your friend did that to you, fuck business. If your friend got on a major platform and made you seem like a bum when he knows and you know that you weren't a bum because he knows that you have a fan base that's going to eat up whatever you say. They're going to believe whatever you say. You got to look at him like he a whole ass nigga. I don't give a fuck. You have to, especially if you really know what's going on. You have to. Now, um, what it was? It was hour long. If you want to pay the two dollars, you can go pay the two dollars. It is very interesting to hear them break down certain things, the Patreon thing, the Spotify thing. Rory also broke down that at one point he had a t uh, he had a, a lunch with Elliot, and they was talking about a title deal because Elliot was over at Title. Rory brought the deal, or like you know, this is not not a real deal, just like a. 
paper towel deal, just throwing out shit to Joe. Joe barked on him about that. Why the fuck are you talking to people about the podcast? Da, 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 da. So also, like I said, Rory and Ma got to take accountability for not seeing, what did Joe say, the tea leaves. He was already on some tyrannical shit. He was already like on some, why the fuck y'all talking about this? This ain't your place to talk about this. If I'm in a profit sharing thing, I'm invested in this podcast because I get paid as it gets bigger. I want this shit to get bigger because you, you can say you don't like money. I don't give a, everybody likes money. The bigger this gets, the more money I get. Plain and simple. If you work in sales, and you know you work off commission, the more sales you get, the more money you get. If you work in sales and your job gives you a pay, but you don't know how much you sold, and they tell you you can't look at how much you sold, this you're getting a thousand dollars in commission this month. You're like, hold on. I didn't make X, Y, and Z. I didn't make Mercedes Benz. I'm not Mr. Mercedes Benz, but I've agreed to a commission split, and that's what we're gonna do. So you're gonna show me. You ain't gotta show me everybody's book, but you're gonna show me what I'm supposed to get. And with them, it's the whole company, not the network. I don't know what city thing is makes. I don't know what girl I get. I don't know about that. But for this podcast, I need the accounting for this. I don't need the Joe Button Network accounting. I need the accounting for this. So, but like, if you're just a person who can't even respect that, or can't even understand, and you're just like, you're just a lackey, like, oh no, I'm with Joe for life. I, there's no point in me having a conversation with you because you're gonna do what you want to do. If you take this information and you say, well, fuck them, they're bums, they're Rory and Mealy, like, if you're the that's fine, that's, that's cute, whatever, you do what you want to do. But it is interesting. You have to look at it. Um, well, look, academics just tweet. I'm going to give them another list. I don't think that should happen. Like, if, you see, if I see profit sharing, I don't even need to see what nobody else got to say and niggas ain't showing you. Because academics would know, too, if he was in a profit sharing thing with somebody, then if they weren't showing him the actual profits, he would feel the type of way as a businessman as well. I don't, like, I know he doesn't even like, so, like, you have to take a grain of salt people who don't like people. You just have to. If somebody doesn't like somebody, you got to take it with a grain of salt. That's just... Uh, the facts of the matter, and that's just the way that, that that goes in that situation. So, I think that's it, man. It was really, they, they really focused in on the accounting thing and the ways that Joe was moving about things when they were asking about accounting. They said it, they let it go on for so long, and then just, it came to a head, everything that was going on. They were trying to squash narratives about the Rory bringing me hands thing. They said they've been, talk, Joe's been talking about fighting him forever on the podcast, so that, that's not even a narrative that needs to be spewed. They also brought, like I said, the homeless thing or try to make it seem like he was homeless. They brought up that narrative. And then even like I said, like Joe, he's it's even in the trailer that they put out. If you don't want to pay, there's like a little five, uh, 50 second trailer where Joe felt like because he's the rapper, he brought the most to the show and that it was a trickle over from rap. He said, I traveled with you on tours when you was a rapper and now we travel now. This is not the same audience. This is not the same thing. I say this a million times, but niggas try to argue me blue in the face. Because Joe Budden had Joe Budden TV and it was a certain type of way, that does not mean that those people trickled over to the podcast. It just doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that. You see people start podcasts that are musicians now and it doesn't trickle over. It doesn't go over and people don't listen to it continuously because they're a rapper. There are plenty of old rappers that have podcasts, that have platforms, maybe even bigger than Joe Budden, that have podcasts that are not as big because it doesn't automatically transfer like that. Just because Joe had 200,000 on there before doesn't mean now that now he has 900. Those were like, rap. obviously it's from the podcast. It was a slow build, slow grind. I can guarantee the podcast wasn't a success when it first started. But for some reason, people like to argue that point. Like it's like, like they're telling me something. I don't know. They're not, you're not telling me. I know how this shit work. If you was watching Joe for his rap music and his vlogs and he started a podcast, especially early podcasting when people wasn't listening to podcasting, that shit did not translate over. It just didn't. It just, it, it did. And I had an example for that. I had an example I was just thinking about just now that I was going to bring up, but I forgot what it was. But yeah, it just doesn't trickle over like that. It just, I'm sorry, it doesn't. So, in my opinion, all in all, they seem like they're getting cut, blank, dry to the truth. And like I've said already, Joe Budden dances around. So now that you have this side... Fully, which they should have did, they should have honestly did this with him there when they came back initially. Like, this should have been the discussion. 
Oh, and Rory brought up like uh, Joe Connor Measley and these things like that. And he said he was the only one trying to keep the podcast together because they brought the narrative that you guys abandoned the podcast. But Joe was the one that told them, hey, we're going to do this for a month. We're going to get it right. These are our demands. These are what we want. He said he's going to get those things done. That's all you guys want. He didn't get them done. And then he said that when he called, talking to Joe, Joe was done with the shit. Ma was done with the shit. He was trying to keep it together and keep the podcast afloat. So he wanted that narrative out there to be squashed that he was some like scum or something like that. So, like I said, don't take my word for it. Go listen to what they say. Form your own opinion. And let's talk. Let's see. I want to know what everybody thinks about the whole situation. Um, it is very interesting. Like I said, it's very interesting, especially because I know ooh, business and friends. But when you feel like you're that close of friends, like if I'm living with a friend in my 20s, in my 30s, we homies. We're not just like, and I'm speaking more to the mall point. We're homies. Rory, he met 2014. That okay. But if I'm with somebody all the time and I know shit about them, that's my friend. I don't think I was snake. I don't think if I was in Joe's situation, I would do that. If nigga said, hey, bro, and especially we're making a lot of money. Hey, bro, can I get the proper accounting paperwork? My bad, bro. No nigga sent you an Excel sheet. My bad. Here goes the real shit. If I wasn't trying to snake them, I would do that. So it does look funny in the light. So, like I said, you guys do your own, you know, looking at it, your own whatever you got to do to look at it. That's how I look at it. Let me know if you guys see in the comment section down below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I don't think they're going to start. I don't think they're doing anything else. I don't think they're going to do another uh, podcast. I don't think they're really, it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't seem like it. Like they're going to try to go into that media space after watching this video of them speaking about this. So for me, make sure you subscribe. Make sure I'm posting notifications every single time that I post. Um, this I wasn't going to post, like the podcast was supposed to be Monday through Friday, but this shit dropped. I had to speak on it because we've been following this thing from the end. We're going to finish this shit out to the end. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you uh, turn on the notification every single time that I post. The actual podcast is Spotify, SoundCloud, and iTunes. You can go check that out over there as well. This is D-Friend Show. I'll see you guys next time, man. Peace.